Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the LG 360 VR. This is a head-mounted display originally designed for the LG G5 as one of the friends or accessories that you could optionally pick up. The difference here is this is less of a module than it really is a traditional accessory that just plugs into the USB-C port on the phone, and you have a larger display that you could use to watch immersive videos as well as uh, YouTube 360 and some other VR content. Now it's really less of a traditional VR headset such as the oculus rift than really a head mounted display so you can think of it as more video glasses not as high tech not nearly as immersive just because the screen size is a little smaller it's much more lightweight it's more portable uh, but still is a fairly interesting uh accessory for the phone. Now the original retail cost of $200 was definitely too steep and now you can find this thing around $40 to $50 so we're going to see if it's a worthwhile at this vastly reduced price point for watching let's say movies uh, in privacy if you don't have a larger television, if you're traveling, things like that. And it just takes power directly from the phone. So there's no integrated batteries or anything uh, like that. So in here we have a case with the glasses inside. There's also a user guide, it seems like, uh, and a microfiber cleaning cloth, as you can see here. Setting this off to the side, the case here is just made out of this rubber material. There's a film on the top. And we have this little sticker that is the Friends logo that LG used. So if we open this up, we have some microfiber internals that protects the glasses. Uh, the glasses sit right on top, and that's it. So we have it folded up along with the USB Type-C cable, which is attached, it looks like, to the right arm. Inside, we also have a very interesting kind of lens protectors uh, put on there, so you can protect the lens from getting scratched when you're not wearing them. And LG claims that uh, these lenses actually do have myopic adjustments. So even if you wear glasses, you don't need to wear your prescription lens when looking at these glasses. You can twist on them to change the focus. And uh, so you can take off your glasses and hopefully still be able to comfortably see uh, into these. The top here does feature access to dedicated controls, including an OK key and a back key. Although one of the benefits of an integrated design like this is you can also use the phone as the remote. So you can plug it into the phone and use the touch screen to navigate around the interface. As Head mounted displays, the difference between this and something like Google Glasses or cardboard, which is also what Samsung is doing for their uh, VR goggles. Uh, so as a result, you, you end up with a frame and a product that's a lot lighter, and so you can hopefully wear this for longer without feeling a lot of stress or strain. The downside is uh, you can see the cost originally was actually quite expensive because from a manufacturing point of view, they have to put in more materials, such as they have to put in real displays in the glasses themselves instead of relying on your smartphone screen. Here's a size comparison with the older Epson Movero, which I think is fitting to some extent because it also plugs into a central processing unit which runs on Android and has a touchpad, just like how the G5 becomes that processor with a touchpad when you plug it in. So similar in terms of setup, but LG's uh, device is more of a kind of video glasses, also with some VR functionality like head tracking, versus the Epson, which is more of augmented reality glasses because you can take off these shades and they become transparent just like the Google Glass. So it mixes the real world with the virtual world uh, and also uses projectors to physically project light beams into your eyes. Okay, so just like the LG Cam Plus module for the G5, the 360 VR isn't quite as plug and play seamless as what you'd expect, taking it out of the box. What you first need to do is install the LG Friends Manager on the G5, then plug in the VR headset, and the phone should recognize that it's been connected. It will try to start VR momentarily. Uh, but the first time that you plug it in, it's also going to tell you to install all of their VR-related content and apps that's compatible with these goggles, including the 360 VR Manager app. This entire process of downloading all the apps first before really the VR goggles are going to work took me roughly 20 minutes, even 30 minutes, because I was in the middle of a software update before I could actually use it, which is, again, a little bit disappointing. Definitely not as seamless as you what you would expect. Thankfully, the video experience was definitely worth the slightly longer wait, uh, just because there are more sensors built onto these glasses than I was expecting. Uh, basically, there's a proximity light sensor, so if you try and dim it, basically your face is pressed onto the glasses, you can see the phone's display automatically turns off, and the display on the phone now becomes a virtual touchpad for navigating the VR glasses if you don't want to use the controls baked onto the 
goggles already. So you can swipe around on here, tap to select, and that actually works quite well. When you take these off, uh, so it detects light again, you can see that's the ambient light sensor, um, it's going to turn the phone's display back on. So it conserves on battery and it's actually a pretty smart design. Furthermore, the glasses do have accelerometers built on in. So the motion sensors and gyroscopes built onto the VR headset are also more accurate than I was expecting. The best thing about these glasses is really how comfortable they are. Uh, compared to larger, bulkier VR glasses, these are again closer to older head-mounted displays that we saw on the market, such as the Sony Glasstron. And as a result, it weighs really next to nothing, and you can wear these for much longer periods of time before noticing any stress or strain. However, you are limited by battery life. The G5 has a Snapdragon 820 chipset, which is pretty powerful, but it only came with a 2800 milliamp hour capacity battery. It seems like when you are in the VR mode, it still drains power pretty quickly since the goggles are basically taking power from the phone to power the displays built on in, in addition to all these sensors. But it does give you roughly, let's say, two feature films worth of content uh, before the battery should drain, or a few episodes of TV shows, something like that. Unfortunately, then you have to unplug it and then charge your phone up before you can use it again, since all of this happens using just one USB-C port, which is a little bit uh, inconvenient. For performance and usability, I'm going to separate this into two sections. The first is going to be the hardware in terms of how it actually works, what the experience is like in terms of the displays built onto the glasses. And second is going to be in terms of content, so what apps are available and what selections you have. So this is the 360 VR Manager. It's a very simple app and the glasses give you a completely different view. But from here, we can take a look at things such as a supposed VR channel, but it seems like the service isn't continued anymore because every time I get no content available, which is a little bit disappointing. Now under apps, you'll see a collection of all the, the uh, content that is supported for the glasses installed on here, including a few preloaded content such as VR bowling, VR jungle, aquarium, 360 VR internet, which is a very uh, light web browser that you can access for also watching YouTube, things like that, and also gallery apps that you can use with the goggles. Overall, I'd say that content availability is the biggest downside of the 360 VR glasses simply because there's not a lot that actually works with the glasses. You can't use it with Google Cardboard services and the plethora of the 3D VR titles available from the Play Store. From the content that is available, they all seem to work without too many problems, uh, although you only get, let's say, a handful of games in addition to YouTube 360, which is probably where you'll be spending most of your time, to be completely honest, in addition to uh, the gallery where you can view back and sideload movies. 3D movies can be played on here in addition to photos taken with the camera, and you can blow it up onto a larger virtual screen, which is actually pretty enjoyable. So as with most head-mounted displays and VR goggles, it's really hard to show on camera. Uh, so it will boot up, and we do have this uh, initially this message from LG that says information safety, make sure to take a break after a while, and then you have to tap on OK on the display. And then you'll see these tiles for videos as well as other apps such as uh, YouTube and uh, images, and you hear this beep, that just means it's uh, clicked onto a tile because you're looking at one direction and you found something that you can be clicked on, and then you can tap on OK, for instance, to go into that app. Um, so it's really hard to make out too well on camera. This is the loading screen. After a few seconds, the app should load. Load Overall, the process itself is relatively quick, but uh, just so that you guys get a better idea of what the interface is like, we're going to switch over just to a few images and screenshots that I took. All right, so this is basically what you see when you're wearing the glasses. You, you get all these panels which float up. Uh, they correspond to different types of apps, ones that you're currently having open, and also other apps that support the glasses. It's definitely not crystal clear like a quad HD panel, especially since the pixels are so close to your eyes, but it's sharp enough. I would say it's slightly better than 720p in terms of uh, what the effect is like in real life. The virtual screen size, I would say it's roughly 200 inches, and it would be maybe uh, 8 to 10 feet away from from you, it does feel like you're sitting in a movie theater and watching a large screen experience, such as if you're playing a regular YouTube video that isn't 360, so it's just 2D, it will create a scenario where you're sitting in this movie theater and just watching the movie on this large projected screen, and you can even tilt your head and see seats around you. All the seats are empty, of course, so it's actually a pretty eerie environment in a way, but you're alone in this uh, movie theater, you can look back, there are windows, uh, you're about in the middle of this large 
large theater. There are even lights around you and curtains, uh, and they're all very vivid along with this massive projector screen that is showing off the movie, and it does feel very realistic. Colors are pretty saturated. In fact, they're very vibrant, and blacks are incredibly deep because it's using OLED screens inside, actually two small 1080p panels that gives a PPI of roughly 639. It's just because the, lens, the screens are so close to your eyes, you can see the pixelation more than what you would find, let's say, on a traditional phone. As I was kind of tilting and walking around, all the motions felt smooth, it didn't feel too jumpy, so uh, it felt actually, again, pretty comfortable to wear. The same thing goes with the 3D content. It actually works surprisingly well. There's good depth of field, so objects will actually, you know, reach out to you, especially in some of the games and demos that they have. So in a way, you'll be less disappointed if you think of these as just video glasses, meant to watch 3D movies and have a private cinema that you can fold into your pocket for watching YouTube, for watching content already on your phone, it actually does a very good job. It's just the content for VR, for gaming, is again quite limited at the moment because LG for some reason hasn't opened this up to cardboard and other development tools. But now that the price is under $40, it is actually quite convincing if you have an LG G5 or a more current generation LG phone that has USB Type-C. This is actually something that could be pretty cool. I would say that if you are more into that gaming element, then a cardboard could suit you better. But as a whole for watching movies, especially since these are so much more lightweight and so much more comfortable, uh, this can actually have a slight edge and a relatively elegant solution of just plugging it into your phone with one cable and having it work. Um, again, it could be worthwhile if you have a G5 or a slightly newer LG device. So thanks for watching this hands-on review here at OS Reviews. This was a closer look at the LG 360 VR head-mounted display slash VR glasses.